The Abbott and Costello program, the music of Carl Hoff and his orchestra, our singing star Amy Arnell, and spotlighting that chunky, tubby little cherub who went caught putting a pick and shovel in his Uncle Artie Seven's pocket because he heard him say he had to tear up the street, Conley says, I'm a baby! Costello! Costello! What in heaven's name do you mean by coming in here dressed in pajamas? Abbott, my sister's getting married tonight, and Mom's going to be the best man, and she told me to wear these things. You tell me she told you to wear evening clothes. Well, I always wear pajamas in the evening. Oh. <laughs> Look, never mind that. Where did your sister meet this man she's going to marry? Oh, he's a fireman, Abbott. Yeah. He proposed to her while he was carrying her out of a burning building. No. It was romantic. Must have been. And there she was with her head hanging over his shoulder. And he was seeing smoke that's in your eyes. Oh. <laughs> well, he's, he's a pretty fortunate man to get your sister for a wife. Oh, I don't think so. She's been married once before. You know, I'd hate to be a second husband. Well, what's wrong with being a second husband? I, I'm my wife's fifth husband. You're no husband. You're a habit. <laughs> Abbott's a habit. All right, all right, all right. All right. Abbott's a habit. All right, all right quiet, Costello. You're, you're an idiot. You're a habit, Abbott. Yes, uh, <laughs> Costello. That rhymes. I don't care what it does. Habit, Abbott. Never mind what it does. You're an idiot. You don't even know what a husband is. A husband is what's left of a sweetheart after the nerve has been killed. Uh, uh, <laughs> All right, wise guys, what is a wife? A wife is the one who sticks to you through all the trouble you wouldn't have had if you hadn't married her. <laughs> Look, will you talk sense, Castella? What, what is your sister going to wear at the wedding tonight? Oh, Abby, she's got a beautiful torso. Uh, torso? Every bride has to have a torso. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I think you mean she has that trousseau. Uh, no, he ain't going to be there. Uh, uh, who, won't, who won't be there? Robinson trousseau. Right on. No, 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 no. Look, Castella, this is his first wedding. When she came into the church, uh, did you notice her train? What train? She drove up in a second-hand Plymouth. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm talking about her dress. Didn't you see that long white piece of goods hanging from her dress? Oh, yes, sir. I saw that. Oh, well, that was her train. Oh, I tripped over that and tore it off. You, you tore off her train? Yeah. How did the bride look without a train? Oh, she looked like a late plate with a loose caboose. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Never, never mind that, Costello. What kind of a fellow is this man your sister is married? I don't like him. You don't? There's something wrong with him, Abbott. What do you mean? He likes to hear the water bubbling in the bathtub. Well, what if he does like to hear the water bubbling in the bathtub? Uh, that doesn't bother you. It's my head he holds under the water. <laughs> <laughs> and he's very mean to animals, now, sir. Now, careful. How do you know he's mean to animals? Last night when he slept with me, he chased all my pigs out of bed. <laughs> oh, he's probably not as bad as you he try to make out. He chased all my pigs out of bed. You said that once. You said that once. All right, let's try it again. Well, all right, you can try it once more. Hope it doesn't fall apart. All right, all right, never mind. Louis, what is this man's name? Izzy Rappaport. Izzy Rappaport. Where is that big, fat, slava brother-in-law of mine? Uh-oh. Oh, hey. That's me, Abbott. Yeah. That's, that's him now. He's, here he comes. Here he comes. Well, my well. brother-in-law. My, my future brother-in-law. Look, Costello. Here's a pair of striped pants that I'm going to wear to the wedding tonight. They're four inches too long. I want you to take them to the tailor shop and have them short. And have them back here at six o'clock. Do you hear? Yes, sir. And if those pants aren't back at six, Fatso, I'll knock that pumpkin head of yours so far down inside your ribs, you look like you're peeking out from behind a Venetian blind. <laughs> Time my sister's gonna marry. Why do women go for big, rough, tough men when they can have three little girls, boys ah. like me? <laughs> just, uh, just forget that. <laughs> Louis, you better get that guy's pants shortened before he shortens you. Now take them over to my Uncle Herman at the Hollywood Dry Cleaning Plant. Dry Cleaning Plant? Yes. What is your Uncle Herman doing there? Well, this is Thursday. He's dying today. Oh, that's terrible, Abbott. <laughs> that's terrible. I didn't even know he was sick. Oh, he isn't sick. He's dying. He's dying and he ain't sick? Oh, that's right. If he was sick, he couldn't die. Why not? Oh, it's against rules of the cleaning plant. <laughs> you better have laws. <laughs> you mean you will let him die if he's sick? 
That's right. If a man is sick, they won't let him into the place to die. Well, what do they do? Leave him out in the alley? No, 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 no. He can't die in the alley. If he wants to die, he has to go up to the seventh floor. He's got to die on the seventh floor. Certainly. <laughs> wow. Is there an elevator in the place? No, no. The nerve of those people. Making a poor man climb seven floors to die. Why did he send him home? Well, because his wife don't want him dying in the house. How do you like that? <laughs> Might as well crawl under a rock. What for? Imagine a guy can even die in his own house. No, 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 no. If there's any dying to be done around the house, his wife does it. <laughs> you mean his wife's got to die, too? Oh, certainly. Yeah, but what are you trying to do? Bump off the whole family? I've got a good mind to bring poor Herman over to my house to die. Oh, no. He couldn't die at your house. And why couldn't he die in my house? Well, because you have no dies. Oh, you've got to have die to die? Yeah, yeah, sure. Die to die? Yes. Die to die to die to die. All right, never mind. Never mind that. Die to die. Will you please pay attention? I'm trying to... What I'm trying to tell you is that my Uncle Herman has to die so he can live. If he doesn't die, he can't eat. You mean he eats after he dies? Oh, certainly. <laughs> then he dies for a while and then he eats. Then he dies again and uh, he eats some more. Must be the food that's killing him. No, no. <laughs> No, no, they no, had no. a fight to eat at the bag stage. No, you idiot. No, no. A man, has to, eat. no, a man has to eat if he stands up all day dying, Louis. You mean he has to stand up to die? Well, naturally. Did you ever hear of anybody dying lying down? All the people I ever knew did. No, look, uh, fella. He can't lie down on the job. He's got to be through dying by six o'clock. If he dies after six... Don't well, forget, if he dies after six, he's, he gets time and a half. <laughs> You mean he gets paid for dying? Oh, yes, yes, it's peace work. Oh, he dies for peace for the time. <laughs> well, look, look, you idiot. It's what a is... slow death. No, 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 nothing of the kind. Look, when I say Uncle Herman is dying, I don't mean that he's dying like a person dies when he dies. I mean he's dying for a living, and a person that dies for a living is a living even though he's dying. Oh, when you say that Uncle Herman is dying, you don't mean that he's dying like a person dies when he dies. You mean he is dying for a living, and a person that dies for a living is living, although he's dying. Now you've got it. Now I've got it. I don't even know what I'm talking about. They won't get wise And when they see us Together I'll brush the dream From my eyes
What is it, Mr. Rappaport? Where is that prospective brother-in-law of mine? Isn't he packed with my pants yet? N- no, he isn't. I imagine he had to wait. You know, tailors are pretty busy now. If I know that stupid cut fellow, he's probably standing at a street corner winking at girls. Oh, Mr. Izzy Rappaport, Costello is not interested in girls, and you know it. No? Then why does he call Greer Garten on the phone every night and say Costello's back? Get rid of Gable. <laughs> Listen, Abbott, I've got 30 minutes to get dressed. If he doesn't get back here with those pants, I can't marry his sister. Send Costello up to my room as soon as he gets back. Hey, Abbott. Costello, it's about time you got here. Rappaport has been down here yelling for his pants. You get him shortened like he said? Nope. The tailor shop was closed when I got there at 6 o'clock. But you left here at 3 o'clock. Where have you been? Well, I was walking up Hollywood Boulevard, and there was a, there was a picture there. I just had a sheet. The Wolfman's daughter married Zombie, the son of Dracula at the foot of Frankenstein's grave. <laughs> <laughs> well, that didn't take three hours. There was a double feature, Rabbit. The second picture was glad she comes home. Just as I was going to leave, the terrific love scene started. How that blonde could neck and kiss. Now, wait a minute. Now, there's no blonde in Lassie Comes Home. No, but there was one with me in the balcony. <laughs> Look, Costello, what are you going to do? Will you listen to me, please? What are you going to do? Rappaport said that if you uh, didn't get the pants shortened, he'd call the wedding off. Yeah, but let's go across the hall and we'll see Mrs. Niles. Maybe uh, she'll shorten them for me. All right. Hello, Mr. Rabbit. Oh, I see you boys are moving. You had your overstuffed sofa out in the hall. <laughs> Oh, pardon me, that's Costello. <laughs> Mrs. Niles, I didn't come over to argue with you tonight. My sister is getting married in a half an hour, and I've got to have the coon's pants shortened four inches. You have a lot of nerve coming to me with your sewing. Whoever gave you the idea that I could use a needle and thread? Well, everybody says you're an old so-and-so. I am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mrs. Niles, uh, can't you please help Costello? I'm sorry, Mr. Everett, but I'm going out. I'm going to the dog show, and I expect to win a blue ribbon with my tether. <laughs> well, I hope you win it. Costello, I refuse to talk to you. Well, now what are you going to do, Costello? You still haven't got the pants short. Wait a minute, Abbott. There's a little tailor shop right around the corner that stays open till quarter of seven. Well, come on, you've only got one minute to make it. What's that? Hey, Abbott. What? I read everything in a script. <laughs> hey, Abbott. <laughs> there's a tailor shop there, and there's still a light in the window. Hey, Mellon. Hey, look, tell us Mellon Head. Mellon Head, I can't talk to you now. I've got to get in the tailor shop. I've got to get these pants shortened because my sister's getting married tonight to a fellow named Izzy Rappaport. Izzy Rappaport, huh? She's too good to marry a guy like my brother Johnny. Oh, no. I'd like to see him married to your brother. Fine thing. My brother has a wife and 16 kids, but you want him to throw his first wife out and marry your sister, huh? No, he shouldn't throw out his first wife. Oh, they should all live together, huh? Go on. Tell everybody my brother's a bigamy. Your brother's not a bigamist. I suppose that Hawaiian girl he married the other day was his grandmother, huh? <laughs> Look, your brother has two wives. Your brother has two wives. Go ahead, yell it out so his third wife will hear you in Kentucky. <laughs> Look, Millerhead, your brother shouldn't be married to all those women. Marriage is a beautiful thing. It makes for supreme joy. Oh, my wife pulled out all my hair because she's happy, huh? <laughs> If you don't like your wife, then why did you marry her? My wife happened to be my school teacher for seven years. Well, you didn't have to marry your school teacher. I suppose you know a better way to get out of the fourth grade. <laughs> <laughs> Mellonhead, why are you picking on your wife? I know your wife, but she's everything a good wife could be. Then why does she always go out without wearing her wedding ring? Oh, that's very bad. You should make your wife wear her wedding ring all the time. Oh, day and night, she should sit in the pawn shop, huh? <laughs> You mean that you pawned your wife's wedding ring? I certainly couldn't get a nickel on her. <laughs> You've got no right to talk like that. Your wife was 14 carats pure gold. Then why does she turn green every spring? <laughs> Look, Estella, the man is pulling the shades down on the table shop. He's closed now. I can tell you, poor Mellonhead. You can be good and mad now. You and me are going to fight this thing out. Okay, I'm ready to fight. You see this piece of chalk? Well? I'm going to draw a line right across the sidewalk. Go ahead and draw it. Now, okay, I'm going to draw right across the sidewalk. Well, go ahead. So what? So what? I'm daring you to step across that line. You're daring me to step across that line? I dare you to step across that line. You little pipsqueak, I'll step across the line there. I'm across the line. No, no, I'm across the white line. I'm across the white line. Now what? Now you're on my side. Amy Arnell brings us the rhythm favorite at 
Atlanta, GA. I love the morning glories growing and the breezes softly blowing in Atlanta, GA. I love to wake up in the morning, see the sun come up, the dawning in Atlanta, GA. I love to walk among the flowers and taste the honey from the bees. I want to while away my hours, reading books and dreaming dreams beneath the trees. I want to see the ivy clinging, want to hear the robin singing little songs. I adore, I want to tend the sun to meet want to hear that friendly greeting when I get home once more. I long to hold that certain someone, I miss him more and more each day. I'm getting ready for a wedding, gonna get the train to heading for a ladder, G.A. I want to see the ivy clinging, want to hear the robin singing little songs. I adore, I want to attend the Sunday meeting, want to hear that friendly greeting when I get home once more. I long to hold that certain someone, I miss him more and more each day. I'm getting ready for a wedding, gonna get the train to heaven for a land of Come in. Mr. Abbott, is my brother Louis here? Oh, hello, Marie. Costello, your sister's here. Oh, hello, Marie. Are you all ready for the wedding? What wedding? Izzy refuses to go through with the wedding without his striped pants. He says he gave them to you to be shortened. Now, where are they? She says, I didn't get them shortened. I went to a movie with a little blonde next door, Tessie Tinfoil. Tessie Tinfoil? Mm. Didn't Mama tell you to stay away from her? Oh, but she's such a nice girl. She works in a candy factory. She's a mechanic. A mechanic in a candy factory? Yeah, she tightens the nuts on peanut brittle. That's <laughs> fine! <laughs> Costello, stop this silliness, please. Yes, Louis. Do you realize that you're wrecking my marriage? I don't know why Izzy gave you the pants in the first place. You never do anything right. You nearly ruined my first marriage. What did I do? I told you to stand outside the church door and to throw rice on us when we came out. You ruined our clothes. Ruined your clothes? Costello, what kind of rice did you throw? Fried right, rice with a cool young. And then and then you deliberately pushed me out of the cab and went away with my husband on my honeymoon. Uh, but Jesus. I've never seen Niagara Falls. <laughs> Come on over and kiss your poor old father. I don't know why I have to have to be an idiot for a brother. Louis Costello, if this wedding doesn't go through tonight, I'll never speak to you again as long as I live. I hate you. Well, Costello, you certainly messed things up again. I guess I'm just no good at it. I hope my scout master don't hear about this. <laughs> He'll take my scout pin away from me, and then everybody will point their finger at me, and they will laugh. Wait a and minute. And they will be up. Oh, they'll laugh so hard. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Does the pin mean that much to you, Costello? Yes, sir. It holds up my pants. I... <laughs> oh, drop it. Costello, wait a minute. Here comes the actress, Bessie Mae Mucho. Oh, maybe she can shorten the pants for me. Yeah. Miss Mucho, I'm in an awful fix. I had to get the groom's pants shortened for my sister's wedding, and all the tailor shops are closed. Could you shorten them for me? I'm sorry, Mr. Costello. I'm just leaving for Santa Monica. I've been invited to a... I'm going to a card party at the home of that famous author, Spencer Trossy. Spencer... <laughs> Spencer Trossy? Oh, Abby, you know who Spencer Trossy is. He lives right next door to Clark Ubel. <laughs> We're going to play a few hounds of Jean Rooney. Jean Rooney? Yes. Don't you just adore a thrilling game of Jean Rooney? No, my favorite game is stewed hookers. <laughs> well, boys, I hope you get the point shortened. But I may say in Spanish, uh, hasta mañana, amigos. And a half a banana, some tomatoes for you. <laughs> Costello, please, do you realize that the wedding starts in ten minutes and you haven't got those pants shortened yet? Uh, but what am I going to do? Put them on, laddie. Oh, hey, it's our old friend, Scotty Brown. Laddies, I come over here to the wedding to offer my services. I'd like to drive the bride and groom to the railroad station. 
I go to all the weddings in town, and I always drive the happy couple. Isn't that pretty expensive, Scotty? No, laddies. It's downhill to the railroad station. <laughs> and I always get the old shoes that are tied to the back of the car. Uh, look, Scotty, please. Costello's in trouble. He was supposed to get a pair of pants shortened for the groom, and he didn't do it. Scotty, do you think your wife could shorten them four inches for me? I'm sorry, laddie, but my wife is very busy today. She went out in the chicken coop and discovered that our setting hen was gone. Is she out looking for the hen? No, she has to stay home and sit on the eggs. <laughs> Come on, laddies. <laughs> Well, Crystal, what are you going to do? Holy jump up and sit down. It's my father. Just a minute, Louie. Don't try to hide under that table. Come here to me. Pop, you look mad. What's the matter? You know what's the matter. You've ruined your sister's wedding. To think that you couldn't do a little thing like getting a pair of pants, Jordan. How could you hurt us like this? After all we've done for you. Why, I can remember when you were going to kindergarten. I went to school with you every morning and came home with you every afternoon. You didn't even appreciate that. Well, all the other kids laughed at me. Why should they laugh at you? They thought it was funny me and my father was in the same grade. <laughs> That's enough of this. Your sister is out in the kitchen crying her heart out. Izzy Rappaport refuses to come out of his room until he gets his striped pants. I hate to say this to my own son, but Louis Costello, get out of this house and don't ever darken my door again. Abbott, this is awful. Me and my own father breaking up. Now I won't have anybody to play jacks with. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lou, but you brought it on yourself. Abbott, I'm going upstairs. I'm going to pack my things and get out of here. What about the pants, Costello? They're right there on the table. Goodbye, Abbott. Goodbye, Lou. Poor Costello. Come in. Oh. Hello, Mrs. Niles. I came over for the wedding, Mr. Abbott. Oh, I guess there, there isn't going to be any wedding, Mrs. Niles. I still didn't get the pants shortened, and his father just ordered them out of the house. I'm going up and help him pack. Uh, I'll see you later. Oh, poor Costello, being ordered out of the house on account of a pair of pants. He's a little stinker, but I should have shortened them when he asked me to. Hey, it isn't too late to do it right now. There's the pants lying there on the table. I'll just take them over to my apartment, cut off the four inches, and bring them back. Oh, my, I feel so much better. Won't Costello be surprised when he finds out I shortened the pants? I'll just put them back on the table here. <laughs> I feel like a girl scout. Mr. Abbott, Mr. Costello. Oh, uh, hello, hello, Scotty. I, I haven't got time to talk to you. Costello's father just ordered him out of the house because he didn't get the pants shortened for the wedding. Uh, I've got to call a taxi. I'll, I'll, I'll see you later, Scotty. Costello being ordered out of the house. Hey, wait a minute. There's no reason why my wife couldn't shorten the pants while she's sitting on the eggs. <laughs> I'll take them home now. Oh, this is the way we shorten pants, we shorten pants. Well, there's the pants all shortened and everything. It didn't take the wife no time to fix them. And with the four inches I cut off each leg, we made a nice pair of drapes for the bathroom window. <laughs> Well, I'll just drop them back here on the table. Hurry up. Upstairs there, Costello. Hurry up. The taxi cab is waiting. I'll be down in a minute, Abbott. I'm writing a farewell letter to my mom and pop. Okay. Oh, gee, I can't let Costello go like this. Oh, why, we've always been together as long as I can remember. We even worked hard together as kids. Why, I can remember on those cold winter nights. I'd hold the lantern and he'd chop the wood. <laughs> the thing, the thing that a pair of pants would come between us. Hey, wait a minute. I wonder, if, I wonder if I'd botch the things up if I, if I tried to shorten them myself. Hey, no. Here's a pair of scissors and some glue. I'll cut off four inches and, and, and glue the ends up. He won't know the difference. There we are. All done. I'm ready to go. This is goodbye, old friend. Costello, I've got a surprise for you. You don't have to go. I shorten the pants for you. You shorten the pants, Abbott? Abbott, let's make this a double wedding. Uh, a double wedding? What do you mean? I didn't know you could sew. Uh... <laughs> well, Costello, where are my pants? Here they are, Mr. Rappaport. All shortened and everything. Okay, I'll go in this room and put them on. Hey, Abbott. I guess I won't have to leave home after all. 
How do I look in the pants? <laughs> hey, I didn't know you was coming to the wedding, Napoleon. Napoleon? <laughs> Napoleon, do I look like Napoleon? You do in those short pants. You're showing your bony parts. Ah! <laughs> I should go around weeping. I should care. I should go without weeping. Strangely enough, I sleep well. But for a dream, or two, and I count my sheep well. Honey, how she can lull you to sleep. Oh, I should care. I should let it upset me. I should care, but it just doesn't get me. Maybe I won't find someone as lovely as you. Bud and Lou, back to the final word. Well, Costello, you were the most popular man at the wedding tonight. Yes, I really was, Abbott. And all I can say is... Now, pardon me, Miss Costello. Would you mind posing for a picture? I'm the photographer for the Hardware Journal. We'd like to have a picture on our front cover this month. Wait a minute. Why do you want my picture on the front cover of the Hardware Journal? We picked you of the nut of the month. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night, folks. Good night, everybody. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.